This is Digital Music Trends coverage of uh, South by Southwest 2013 and we're heading towards the end of the conference. It's now Friday, so tomorrow's the last day. And uh, I'm here with uh, Jim Carroll, uh, who's a journalist at the Irish Times and covers uh, music and music business. So hi uh, Jim and great to have you on the show. How's it going? Very good, thank you very much. I'm, like you, I'm kind of glad it's coming to an end. It's been a long, it's been a long 10 days. Yeah, it's been a long 10 days. So uh, let's talk about, you know, um, I wanted to get the feel for, from you of, of, of how you felt uh, South by One and what were, what, what were the highlights for you? Uh, so let's start with the, the music tech sort of convergence. What, what do you feel were the, if, if there was a, a trend that jumped out at you in terms of uh, uh, really something that, that's, that's coming up? Did, did, was there anything in particular? I think the biggest trend that jumped, that jumped out of the, of, the, of the week of panels and talks was probably the fact that there, there wasn't any big trend. There, was, there wasn't one big trend. There wasn't one big, I suppose, uh, uh, app movement, launch, uh, anything at all that ruled everything as it happened in previous years, like Twitter and, and Foursquare. And I think what that also shows is it shows that, I suppose, the South by Southwest is changing again. And this is really interesting. I mean, like, I, I cover interactive and I cover music. And music, we leave music aside for now, right now. Music never changed. Music is 2,000 bands playing for attention 2,000 bands who need to get attention by uh, all means necessary they're playing that, that will always be what music is about interactive depends on I suppose the, the memes and moods of the time and right now they're, 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 you, you can point to different things that kind of came out of, of the kind of the, the interactive side that have I suppose you know an effect for music there's a data there's a big big emphasis on data and how data can be used you had Nate, you, you, the best, one of the best presentations went to, went to was by Nate Silver the statistician who works with New York Times who predicted last year's US presidential election outcome he he was really, really interesting. There was a lot of like pieces on data journalism and how journalists can use data for, for different things. And it got me thinking about like, can the music industry use data? And that would be it would have been interesting to have kind of a panel about that as well as part of, as part of that. Then there was also the move. I suppose a big move towards physical over digital. You had the I suppose the three D printers which were yeah. everywhere. You also had there was a very interesting a panel about the emotional quotient in physical objects. And the example the uh, I, I can't remember the name of the guy, but one of the people on the panel gave was to physical record. You know, the, you you you. you invest emotionally in that in that physical piece of plastic over an mp3 I and mean, who loves mp3s we don't you know we, we use them we abide them we tolerate them we don't love them whereas with the actual physical piece of vinyl there was a, there was a, a love there so it's about that ta- it's supposed to move to tangible as well yeah. but in terms of any big overarching kind of like teams no i mean i, I have to say the one the one the one i suppose team that i would have touched on would have been disruption quite a lot yeah. we we, did, we uh, i hosted a panel about constructive disruption of the music industry on tuesday and i have to say i, I was staggered at how well attended it was i was staggered as well by the response afterwards about the issues we raised during that panel and I think disruption is something which has come up on so many different panels other panel yesterday on the downloaded music documentary on Alex Winter's documentary on uh, on Sean Fanning and and Sean Parker's you know the the, the ultimate the, the first disruptive thing that the music industry faced over a decade ago and it's interesting that that particular word came up again and again and again in that panel that like I mean we're still we're still seeing the music industry trying to I suppose adjust to those shock waves yeah. and trying to kind of make sense of what's going on and try and find a viable business model out of all the disruption that's currently underway and that's happened in the last 10 years. Yeah, and, and disruption is a, it's a word that's been around a lot. The problem with the music industry is that there are a lot of legal constraints when it comes to uh, disrupting the industry and actually uh, creating new viable business models from, from a legitimate company. So, uh, do, 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 do you feel at like your panel that that was still an issue for, for, for the panelists? Yeah, I think the first thing to address is the fact that disruption is a very negative word. If I said to you, I'm going to disrupt you, it always means I'm going to grab you and shake you quite a lot. But So we put constructive in front of it to, like, I mean, to soften it down or create is another way of doing it and I think the music industry here here's the word disruption it immediately kind of like sends out the tanks hires legal eagles and goes to war because it doesn't want to be disrupted it just wants to keep what it has kept but what you just said is very interesting uh, we had a woman called Brooke from uh, Detour and Songkick on the panel yeah. and again she was one and she's also a musician so she she exists in that interesting kind of balance between the two on one hand she knows about like how disruptive technology has been how disruptive it, 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 can, it can be when people go, into, go in without well, getting the, the proper permissions, proper rights, proper licenses. But as a musician, she needs, she sees the benefits of kind of like what tech can do. And in, in, in an awful lot of ways, I mean, the music industry, I, I, I have no real sympathy for the music industry when it kind of argues about disruption, mainly because it had a chance Back in the late '90s, pre Napster, to get all these sorted out, all those big com- all those big tech and tele- telecom companies initially approached music labels about g- g- partnerships, about viable partnerships, and the like. 
music industry has a chance to do something back then. It didn't do it. So I know the tech companies just kind of went ahead without permission. But what were they going to do? The calls weren't being returned or emails weren't being returned. Yeah. And it's something that what's happening now is a very interesting dance uh, going on between the record labels and the tech companies. The tech companies know they can't do the dog anymore with, with, with the record labels because they, they, the record companies went down on like a ton of bricks. Plus as well, the tech companies know from the deals they've done via Spotify and other people that the music labels now are accommodating because as the music labels know, they have to be accommodating because that's a revenue source. Yeah. Uh, looking at the, the bands that are playing here, uh, so um, majors versus indie, you know, there, there's uh, a South by seems to be more and more uh, bigger acts that come and compete for the attention of uh, uh, smaller bands that w were supposed to be, I guess, the focus of the, of the conference. Uh, so how do you see that balance sh shifting? Okay, first of all, the South Southwest would argue that that was never, was never the case where it was going to be about new music. They would always say, we we're always going to bring in special guests. We had Johnny Cash here, we had Tom Waits there, yada, yada, yada. The problem is the narrative has changed. The narrative of South Southwest was always about where small bands would go when they rediscovered. I remember seeing Bonnie Fair playing in a cellar down the road. Fleet Fox was playing on a roof over there. And that was amazing. That made South Southwest for me. But as South Southwest has got more popular, you're attracting brands, you're attracting the likes of Spotify, Samsung, uh, Nokia, all those big brands are coming in. And in order for those big brands to cut through the noise, what they're doing is they're hiring bigger and bigger acts. And the bigger and bigger acts are, are very happy to pay for the big brands because they're getting a paycheck. A band who comes to South West playing a Fisher Showcase don't get paid, as we all know. If you're a big act, if you're likes of Justin Timberlake or Foo Fighters or Prince who's playing here tomorrow night, you know, you, 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 the days of you doing free gigs are well and truly over. You need someone to pick up the tab for you. And that's where the brands come in. And it's the, it's, it's the brands have kind of taken over at South by Southwest. I mean, I have to say, you know, that I find that Doritos stage, uh, just around the corner from the Hilton where we're speaking right now, it's a 62 foot high stage done up as a vending machine to basically plug a brand of, uh, of, ta of, of crisps or chips uh, called Doritos. I find that to be horrible. I, I, I don't like that. That's, 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 a, that's right in your face. But Doritos are the people who are paying the bills and therefore Doritos can put up a 62 foot stage in the middle of Austin, a brand I'd like to have done. I think though the, the, the narrative will have to change a little bit because the reason why I suppose the big bands dominate things is that when press people go back to their to their editors to talk about South by Southwest, the press, the, the, the commissioning editor doesn't know about a small little band you've seen on, 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 on Sixth Street that you know are going to be big in three years' time. The commissioning editor knows about Prince. He knows about Justin Timberlake and that's why that, that's where he's coming from. I think it, it, it will be an interesting balance. I think as with kind of like, I suppose, the, the interactive side of the festival, having to find its feet after, after a period of transition. Music will also find its feet, but music, the thing about music is music will always be there because you will always have 2,000 new bands eager for attention, eager to look for attention and do what has to be done in order to get attention. That's great. Well, thanks so much for your time and uh, hopefully I'll have you on uh, the main DMT show soon. Thank you. Thanks very much. No problem.